now look at an aspect of procedures and parameters which we had not considered before, which has to do with how the procedure modifies the parameters which are passed to it. So let us recall our procedure which would add up the marks for either gender in any subject. So we passed two parameters gender and field and we asked it to calculate the total marks in the particular field physics, maths or chemistry or total for that gender male or female. But notice that this procedure assumes that there is a fixed set of cards which it is operating on. So there is no mention in this about what pile 1 is. So pile 1 is assumed to be already existing. So this procedure exists in a context where pile 1 is fixed. So if we want to make this work across different sets of cards, different grade cards for different classes for example, then we need to also pass the deck of cards as a parameter. So this becomes now a third parameter. right? And now instead of pile 1 and pile 2, we have to have another value which accounts for what we call pile 2. So we have a deck of cards which we are processing, the deck in which we have starting to look for values and the deck of cards which we have finished processing, pile 2, which we will call scene deck. So what happens in this procedure is that cards are taken, so we have this original deck, right? And then one by one we look at them and then we put them into the scene deck. So gradually as we go along, this number of cards keeps dwindling, right? So eventually we come to a situation where the deck has no more cards. So this is something that we pass to the procedure. So we passed a deck of cards in some format to the procedure. And as the procedure went through the cards, the deck disappeared. At the end of the procedure, the deck that we passed to the procedure is empty. Now this is not acceptable because we do not want the cards to be lost in some sense in data. I mean they are not lost in a physical sense but as data because we cannot proceed because the value deck that we were dealing with is no longer meaningful. So in this procedure there has to be some way to undo what has been done here. right? So what has been done here is to take everything from one deck and move it to another deck and we want to restore it. So, the question that we are asking in this lecture is what does it mean to restore and is it just sufficient to say the procedure should restore the deck. So what is the status of deck if we have restored it? Is it exactly the same as we passed it? Well, first what does it mean to be exactly the same? Are the cards in the deck the same? Well, we certainly expect that each card is exactly as it was before we passed it. So the deck consists of exactly the same cards that we gave it. If we gave 30 cards with certain data on it, each card comes back with the same data. None of the cards is updated or changed in any way. What about the sequence of cards? So if we gave the deck of cards in a particular sequence, can we be sure that the sequence that we get back is exactly the sequence that you gave? Now this may not be the case. For instance, this is where this term restore deck becomes important. So supposing as we said our cards were say numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and this is how we had them. So, so we had uh, so we had card 1 and card 2 and this is our deck from top to bottom. So we had 4 cards numbered 4, 3, 2, 1 from top to bottom. Now as we transfer them what happens in the second deck is the fourth card goes to the bottom then the third card comes, then the second card comes and the first card comes. right? So the second deck is actually inverted with respect to the first deck. Now if restoring just means copying this back or moving this back to this side, then what we have is a reverse deck compared to what we started with. right? So the scan, scene deck would normally be in the reverse order. So this is what is called a side effect. So a side effect is when we pass some information to a procedure and the procedure actually inverts or reverses this thing or does something to it which was not part of the uh, procedures requirement. So in the case of the cards, a side effect is that the sequence of cards may be disturbed. So this was not necessary. I mean, so the fact is that when we asked it to find something, the sum of the marks, we did not require it to be disturbed. So it being disturbed was a consequence of how it was computed. So does it matter to us? Well, well, it does not matter as long as we are just going to use these decks for adding cards because adding the card does not matter because 5 plus 7 is 7 plus 5. So if I can add it in any order, I will get the same sum. So if we pass it again and it is in a different order, again the result will be the same. 
Sometimes on the other hand, the side effect is really what we want to achieve. For example, supposing we wanted to arrange the cards in ascending order or descending order, say in decreasing order of total marks. We wanted the highest mark and the second highest and so on. We might have a procedure which takes the cards in some arbitrary order and gives it back to us neatly arranged. So here the goal is actually to rearrange the cards. It doesn't have to compute any value for us, but just give back the deck in a prescribed order, which is different from the order that we gave. And sometimes this order side effect could be undesirable. If we have spent some effort to arrange the cards, for example, in decreasing order, and then we give it to a deck, uh, deck to a procedure which will shuffle it randomly, then the, the effort that we put in to get it arranged in decreasing order is destroyed. So sometimes we may not want the side effect to happen. So the way to think about this is that each procedure actually, we have to specify what it does. So think about signing a contract. Remember this delegation idea, you're delegating this work to someone else. So when you delegate work to someone else, you have to clearly define what the goals of this pro process are. What is the person supposed to do and what are the expectations on both sides? So the first part of this contract is a functionality. What is the procedure supposed to do and how is it going to achieve it? So from the, the person getting the work, they have to know what you will give them. So you have, to, the, you have to specify what parameters you're going to pass. And in terms of the work being done, you have to know what is going to come back. So what is the property of the values? So for example, if I get back this value from this procedure sum of marks, I would like to be sure that the value that comes back is actually the sum of the marks that I requested. The second part, which is more tricky, is this business about side effects. So we have to specify what we expect from the data. Can the procedure have side effects? And if side effects are allowed, then do we know what the side effect is? So do we know, for instance, that it's going to be arranged in this decreasing order? Or do we know that it's going to be reversed with respect to what we had before? Or is it random, right? So this contract specifies what's called an interface, right? So it's like I hand over a job to somebody else and I have, decide, I have told this person what I'm going to give that person to do, and I know what's going to come back. After this, I really don't care how that job is done. Right? It's not my responsibility anymore to figure out what process the other person takes to achieve this job, so long as they return the information to me that I need, and the information that I passed is not disturbed outside the data integrity part of the contract. So in, in computational terms, what we are saying is that we have an interface, we have a boundary between the procedure that is doing the calling and the procedure that is being called. This interface specifies how information flows across this boundary. And as long as this information flow across the boundary is preserved, this interface is preserved, what happens on the other side of the boundary, which is how the procedure actually works, the implementation doesn't matter. So tomorrow, if you replace that implementation by a different implementation, but you preserve the interface, everything is fine. So as an example where we don't want side effects, let's look at this problem that we had of associating personal pronouns with nouns in a piece of text. So here is our familiar piece of text about Swaminathan. And what we do is we decide a pronoun. So for example, we have this he, and we want to know which he this refers to. So the procedure that we described was to take this and search backwards to find a noun which occurs before it. So we split the text into the text that comes before the pronoun and the text that comes after the pronoun. And we go backwards till we find the nearest name, which in this case is Swaminathan. And we stop there and we declare that Swaminathan is the value that is referred to by this he. So if we were to formalize this as a procedure for pronoun matching, then we would have basically the pronoun that we are looking at, the text before it and the text after it. So these are the three parameters. And the pronoun matching function or procedure should start at the current text pronoun and go backwards through the before text till it finds the matching noun. In this process, the sequence of before and after should not be disturbed because this is a sequence of words which defines a piece of text. And as we have seen, the sequence actually determines the answer to the problem. If you shuffle the nouns, then the noun that refers to he will change. So in this case, we definitely do not want this procedure to have any side effects. So there are situations where side effects are totally un undesirable and unacceptable. So to summarize, when we write a procedure, we need to be clear about separating the interface and the implementation. So we draw up a contract in some sense with the procedure, which describes what parameters we will pass, what they're supposed to mean, 
and what values are going to be returned and in addition we also specify what side effects are possible so that we know whether the procedure is allowed to change values that we pass or not allowed to change and perhaps tell us in what way these changes can happen. So the advantage of doing this is that we can change the implementation provided we preserve the interface. For instance, we might have a more efficient way of doing something. So if we replace the current procedure by a more efficient procedure, it should not in any way affect the way that it is called and the values returned are used in the main procedure. So side effects are definitely something we need to be aware of. Sometimes it doesn't matter. Adding up marks, for instance, doesn't matter whether the side effect is there or not. As long as the cards individually are preserved, it doesn't matter if the sequence is disturbed. Sometimes we want the order to be exactly as it was, for example, when the sequence matters in the pronoun matching problem. And sometimes the side effect is actually the desired goal. For instance, the procedure which does sorting. The desired goal is to produce a side effect of a predictable and desired version which is to arrange it in decreasing or in increasing order.